So welcome to this little crafty weaving foraging vlog. Um, I hope you're having a lovely week or day, um, morning or evening, wherever you are. Um, anyway, so I thought I'd tell you a little bit about the project that I'm working on. Um, it's basically about basket weaving um, with gathered materials, but also about the craft of basket weaving, about um, the different purposes that baskets hold, or um, the meaning of baskets, I guess, in connection to foraging specifically, not just using a basket for foraging, but also like foraging materials for a basket, like gathering greens, um, different fibres in urban environments particularly, because I live in a city and I am curious um, what I'm actually doing is making a bunch of different baskets, um, learning a few new techniques, also working with older techniques. I'm not particularly good at basket weaving, I just am very interested in it. Um, I don't think you have to be really good at things, you know, unless you like train and train and train and then you get really good. <laughs> um, that's what I'm aiming to do, but I'm aware that I'm not very good at it. Um, so it is it's like a conceptual project. Um, and I'm really enjoying it and I think it's really beautiful to do things that you're not necessarily really good at um, although I must say I made a really amazing willow basket and I'm very proud of it um, I made it under the guidance of a willow weaver and um, yeah without that person I don't think I could have made such a beautiful basket but uh, yeah I am planning on making straps for that basket out of nettle fibres and for that I need to gather quite a lot of nettle fibres and the nettles are not quite there yet but I am trying to seek out spots where maybe they are um, already ready for fibre collection because they need to be really long and then the fibres also need to be quite strong so usually that'll be kind of mid-June sort of thing but um, yeah we're going towards June now we're, we're getting there but my <laughs> exhibition's actually um, in June so I want to be doing it before the exhibition sort of thing but anyway um, I'm just blabbing on, I'm really not very good at having a coherent structure to talking but um, yeah let me know if you have any questions or like if you've done any weaving, I'm really curious um, if you've made cordage before, I make a lot of cordage, I think it's a really great like base um, weaver, like you can make cordage out of so many things and then even things that aren't necessarily very weavable um, and then it becomes very weavable just through being, you know, a piece of string. So I love it. I love all this stuff. And it's it's so soothing to collect things outside and to just be in the rhythm of picking um, and like the environment, I guess. You kind of become a part of them and your hands get all like, dirty and <laughs> you get um, marks from the things that you pick. And yeah, I think it's a very intimate relationship that you can have with um, plants or like different communities of plants and that's why I like it. Mm. Mm. Anyway, I'm so excited for the natural forest. <laughs> Sedges have ed edges, rushes around, and grasses have knees that bend to the ground. And um, so sedge is quite, ooh, quite painful to touch if you cut, like if you touch it in the opposite direction, it will cut your finger like a paper cut. So I'm wearing gloves. Um, makes a lovely weaver though, so I'm just going to harvest a little bit of this um, for some baskets. kind of harsh as well.
Hello. Um, I just wanted to show you some cordage that I was working on yesterday. Well, and I've been working on the past, God knows how long at this point, but oh, it's gone a bit knotted. Um, anyway, so this is daffodil cordage. Um, it's the stems of daffodils. I've been drying them for a while now. And a lot of them went like a little bit, mm, not mouldy, but just like either too dry or not dry enough. Okay, I've managed to unravel it. Um, basically, this is meters and meters of daffodil cordage, and I'm gonna try and weave with it today. Um, yeah, I'll show you how it goes. It smells a lot like wet, like cut grass, or maybe freshly cut grass, but like wet hay kind of, I don't know. It's just a really nice smell. Um, yeah, I'm gonna still have to cut off all the little extra bits here. So I'll do that today as well. And then I might use it or I might just add to it even more, but I think it's important to unravel it because I don't want it to get moldy. Um, and that happens a lot here when things are quite damp and cold. So yeah, luckily my studio is really warm. A bit more, I say luckily. It can be way too warm, but um, yeah, mainly it's lovely and it's also kind of good in some ways for drying plants. Um, definitely would rather have it like warm and dry than damp and wet, so I'm not going to complain. <laughs> If there's one, there's like a couple. Just in the same, you're going in the same direction, twisty twisty. Twisty twisty, like that. And then it kind of just twists on its own a little bit at the beginning. And then you do twisty twisty. Yeah? Can you see it? Yeah. Then it Nestled really strong. Yeah, he did. Not with grass. No, no. Yeah. I'm not ready. Hold it there. Yes, you are. The only I way you learn is by
have got nice clean water and a cup of tea. Oh my gosh, so frazzled. <laughs> oh, my hands just smell like decay. Ooh.